let's look at magnetic forces on charges. So last time we saw that moving charges create magnetic fields. This time we're going to look at how those magnetic fields can then cause forces on other charges. And this is analogous to electric fields where charges created electric fields and then electric fields could cause forces on other charges. The difference here is that a magnetic field can only cause a magnetic force on a moving charge. So in order for a charge to experience a magnetic force, it must be moving within a magnetic field. We can write down an expression for the amount of magnetic force that a charge would feel. And here it is. F is equal to QVB sine theta. Okay, so F, you can probably guess, that's the magnitude of the magnetic force. Q is the charge that's experiencing the force. V is the magnitude of the velocity of the charge. And B is the magnetic field strength. So that seems a little odd. We have not seen that. But magnetic field strength is represented with the variable capital B. While we're at it, let's go ahead and define its unit. The unit of magnetic field strength is the Tesla, which is written with a capital T, um, and it is a vector. But in this equation, we're only taking the magnitude. It's the magnitude of the magnetic field strength. And then we have theta. Theta is the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field. All right, so that gives us the magnetic field strength. And notice that if the charge is not moving, that means that V is equal to zero and there's no magnetic force. And also it needs to be in a magnetic field. If the magnetic field strength is zero, then there's no magnetic force. And of course, if there's no charge, there's no way to get the force to be zero. And that is if theta is equal to zero degrees or 180 degrees. So in other words, if the velocity and the magnetic field are either in the same direction or in opposite directions, then there's no magnetic force. This equation does not give you the direction of the force. So keep in mind that this equation only gives you the magnitude of the force. It doesn't tell you the direction of the force. In order to determine the direction of the magnetic force, you have to use a right-hand rule. And it's a different right-hand rule than the one that we saw before. The right-hand rule we saw before was for the direction of the magnetic field around a current. Now we're going to use a right-hand rule to find the direction of the force on a moving charge within a magnetic field. So to use this right-hand rule, we are going to point the right-hand fingers in the direction of the velocity. Then we're going to face our palm so that the magnetic field is coming out of your palm. If you do that and you hold your thumb at right angles to your hand, the thumb will now point in the direction of the force on a positive charge. So let's go through that one more time. Point your fingers in the direction of the velocity. Your palm is oriented so that the magnetic field is coming out of your palm. And if you do that, while holding your thumb at right angles to your palm and at right angles to your finger, the thumb now points in the direction of the force on a positive charge. And one little detail to add to that is that if you have a negative charge, the force is in the opposite direction. So you can imagine this takes a little bit of practice. Let's try an example. Let's say that we have a magnetic field coming out of the page or out of the screen. And let's say we have a positive charge that's moving to the right. Okay, so we have the direction of the magnetic field and we have the direction of the velocity. The force on that charge we'll find using the right hand rule. So first, take your right hand, point your fingers so that they're pointing in the direction of the velocity. Then take your palm and orient your palm so that the magnetic field is coming out of it. All right. If you do that, and if you keep your thumb kind of sticking out from your hand, then the force is in the direction that your thumb points. So in this case, 
that would be toward the bottom of the page or bottom of the screen. Let's try a different example. Let's say I have a magnetic field pointed to the left and I have a negative charge moving toward the bottom of the screen. In order to find the direction of the force, well let's see, you point your right hand fingers in the direction of the velocity, so your right hand fingers would point toward the bottom of the screen. Your palm would be oriented so that the magnetic field is coming out of your palm, so you do that. And if you orient yourself that way, then your thumb should be pointing into the screen. So that would be the direction of the force on a positive charge. However, we have a negative charge. So the force would be the opposite of that. The force would point out of the screen. 